Welcome to a new ERA talk. Today we focus on Action 4 of the ERA policy agenda, which aims at strengthening research careers in the European research area to make them more attractive. The overall objective is to make the entire research and innovation system in Europe stronger, more competitive, more resilient. Attractive means also more opportunities, and this is where the latest EU tool for researchers comes in. I'm talking about ResearchComp. What is ResearchComp? ResearchComp is the first EU competence framework for researchers. This is an important action of the new European research area and of the skills agenda. Why did we develop it? Researchers are fundamental not only in academia, but in all sectors of the society. This is the case, for example, of businesses and industry, non-profit organizations or the public sector, but also the establishment and development of own startups. To move between sectors, researchers need to be equipped with transversal skills. And that is where ResearchComp comes into play. It identifies the transversal skills needed and supports their development. This new tool has been developed in close cooperation with stakeholders and its use will support a continuous mobility of researchers between sectors. This will bring benefits for researchers and for the research and innovation system as a whole. Let's now move towards our ERA talk. You will certainly be interested in understanding who can benefit from Research Comp and how. We will find that out with our three distinguished speakers. We have in studio with us Gareth O'Neill, researcher and principal consultant on open science at Technopolis Group. Thank you, Gareth. Emmanuel Gardin, director of the Brussels office of the Coimbra Group, uh, an association of universities. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you. And then we have connected online Maya Poyakalio, vice president for climate and circular economy of the Metsa Group in Finland. Thank you, Maya. Let's now dive into our talk. And Gareth, I will start with you. From the perspective of a researcher, what are the benefits of Research Comp? So the majority of early career researchers need to leave academia uh, and find employment in the public or private sector. Yet these same researchers are often not aware of the skills they have developed or the skills that are needed uh, by future research employers. Um, now, Research Comp helps uh, researchers become aware of the skills that are needed at the various stages of a research career uh, and also the skills uh, that they themselves have acquired to continue and progress in their own research careers in or outside academia. Uh, research Comp basically consists of a set of descriptors and learning outcomes for 38 skills across seven thematic categories and four uh, proficiency levels uh, and this basically allows researchers to assess and improve their level for each skill. Emmanuel, you represent an association of universities. What are the advantages that you see in Research Comp from the perspective of your category? So, and as an association that has contributed to the development of Research Comp, we very uh, much warm, warmly welcome uh, the fact that it's a comprehensive tool which will help uh, recognize the, the richness and the value of research careers on the basis of the latest developments and practice. We hope it will help improve uh, job security and career progression for in particular uh, the researchers that are employed on a uh, project base which are the most precarious conditions. Uh, at the same time, uh, we believe this tool will help our universities navigate the diversity of existing national competence framework for researchers because most of them are already uh, applying uh, similar blueprints but at national level and in the context of intra-European mobility of researchers, we believe uh, it will be a very useful tool. Um, the focus put on transversal skills uh, seems very timely as uh, researchers are facing, like uh, other workers, the accelerated changes on the labour market, uh, what we usually call the future of work, but also in the context of the ongoing reform of research assessment. And um, last but not least, we uh, believe that this new um, common uh, set of competencies will also um, 
uh, participates to the implementation of a culture of equality, uh, diversity and inclusion in universities that is, will help um, uh, trans more transparent uh, recruitment processes with clear job descriptions. Thank you very much, Emmanuel. So we listened to the perspective of researchers and of universities, but uh, ResearchComp fosters intersectoral careers, therefore also in uh, businesses and industry. And Maya, I would like to ask you how ResearchComp can support companies. ResearchComp is an excellent tool to help companies to become more aware of the multiple skills and competencies learned during a research post at the academia. Thus, the tool can support the private sector in finding uh, skilled talent, which is key to future success. For example, competencies like um, networking, science-based problem solving, critical thinking, promotion of, of, uh, of, of, of inclusion and diversity, and systems thinking are crucial to us at Metze Group and also to other companies in which uh, the uh, sustainable development and green transition are in the core of the strategy. Thank you very much, Maya, and thank you actually to all of you for this first round of questions. And I will now ask you, a, the three of you, a general question. How do you think you could be facilitated in the use of Research Comp? And this time I will follow a reverse order. So Maya, I will start from you, please. Research Comp can foster the recognition of researchers' profession and, and boost intersector mobility. As time is a limited resource in working life, it would be great to have easy to read support material, such as infograms and fact sheets. Furthermore, uh, short case examples on how companies have used the tool and how they have profited from it would be useful, for example, in the format of, of videos and podcasts. Thank you very much, Maya. And I now turn to Emmanuel. So <clears throat> from uh, the university perspective, we would look forward to four types of uh, support. Uh, first, obviously, uh, training opportunities to um, fully um, harness the, the full potential of research comp and um, uh, training opportunities that would take place both at national level to facilitate the articulation also with the existing uh, tools in the different national systems, but uh, also European training opportunities for different staff categories at university level. A second type of support um, would be in line with what Maya has just said. It could be a further step uh, for Research Comp to build a digital uh, community, European community, uh, to foster a sense of ownership of Research Comp. So, kind of a platform where um, users could subscribe and um, uh, share um, the ways they are, different ways they are using Research Comp, highlight uh, best practices and, and kind of a toolbox with FAQs. And a third type of support would be uh, human resource related um, uh, tools uh, like self-assessment tools for researchers to identify which level of proficiency they um, currently uh, stay. And uh, a fourth uh, maybe a dream uh, that research comp be translated in all official languages of the European Union because uh, it's important that everyone uh, concerned can access the tool without the obstacle of uh, the language. Thank you very much, Emmanuel. And uh, Gareth, last but not least. So firstly, uh, researchers need to be made aware of the existence of Research Comp uh, and the benefits of using Research Comp, as the framework is not that yet widely known among the research community. Secondly, uh, researchers need to be supported at their home institutions, uh, either by offering skills courses related to the framework or by providing uh, access to external uh, skills courses that the institution itself does not offer. Thirdly, researchers should seek out themselves uh, skills courses that may be offered online or uh, may be offered elsewhere that are not actually yet available at their institution so that they, they themselves take some uh, agency. And finally, on the other side, uh, the institutions need to take research comp into account when designing 
skills programs for researchers and also when implementing a new or revised career assessment frameworks. Thank you very much, Gareth. And thank you all of you for your answers, which are extremely useful. I'm sure they will be highly relevant in developing further support for the use of ResearchComp.